Okay, so we have left off with this over here, which is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and start working a little bit more on like the surface noise that you can see here. And yeah, that's about it. So what I want to do for my surface noise, if I have a look. Now the cool thing is, so we have like some of these cracks over here. And these cracks almost look like very large versions of our cloud stew with our slow blur. Here you are. Yeah, it looks like basically like a slow blur. And then you have your transform. And if you just go to clouds 2, add a transform node and then temporarily scale them up just by pressing the X2 button over here. And then have a look. And you can also actually add like an extra normal over here. Quite strong just to do. And then X2 again. Uh, I don't know, maybe it needs to be a bit stronger maybe. Here, see, that does add some of that interesting damage that we have over here. However, we would not want to have this damage, of course, around our edges. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, right now, because we have scaled this up, as you can see when you press space, it is no longer tiling. So you just want to add a make it tile photo grayscale. And you can just kind of like work with the warping a little bit to get just like a slightly more interesting... Or slightly better transition, I should say. There we go. And that now also works. Then the next thing that you want to do is you want to do some masking. So we have this one, which is actually pretty good. So since we have this mask, we should be able, if we add a histogram scan, to turn this into a flood fill and then add like a selection to it. So first of all, here histogram scan and we make this like a little bit bigger. Maybe push up our contrast a bit more. Yeah, that should work. And then if we go ahead and add a... I don't think I can invert it here. No, I would need to probably add an invert grayscale. Then a flood fill. And after that we are going to just do like a flood fill. And I wanted to show you another one that you can use. And that is the flood fill to gradient. So the cool thing about... Oh, gradient... Flood fill to grayscale. So flood fill to grayscale over here. The cool thing is that with this one we can just plug in a map. And then it will mask it out based upon that. So it will work something like this. We have this one. We can grab a mask where we want to have our damage. So actually you know what. Let's do a histogram scan on our clouds too. Over here. And contrast, and you just want to have like whites. It's it's a mask. It needs to be white and black in order to select it. And when you plug this in here, you can see that now it will randomly, wherever we have some white areas, it will start to just pick out some of these pieces. And then what you might guess what we can do after that is we can go in here. We can then go ahead and we can blend this. And... Or should I blend this in my normal map? This might actually be a lot easier to blend in my normal map than on here. Because if I blend it on here, I can give it a go. Then we would need to rely on blending modes, as you can see, because of these areas. Mm, or we can blur. Let's see, so blending modes probably would not work well. Yeah, here, so blending modes would not work well. Now, I can see if I can just blur... High quality grayscale my mask and I'm just uh, docking it right away so that I can softly transition this. So I guess, yeah, I guess that blurring does work. I wonder if it is also strong enough when I blur it. So if I now go my normal. Okay, yeah, so that does actually add some strength. That is pretty good. Okay, so we got these pieces. And uh, what I can do now is I can go ahead and simply use my opacity to kind of like tone down the intensity of these. So this is one way that we can like add some of these larger chips that we have that you can see over here. Now for the rest it looks like that we just have like some general noise. And some general noise we might be able to actually kind of rip this off. So let me just uh, move this up over here. If we just go ahead and open up our brick wall. Then we can kind of rip off from our grout that we used. And kind of reuse those pieces in here. Here we go. 
So this is quite nice because in designer you can simply copy and paste stuff. So what I can do is I can grab probably, yeah, I probably only need these three. I'm just going to go ahead and grab these three. Then click on my slate roof again, just double click on it. And then it will open that one up. And now you can very simply go in here and then paste them. And that will do the trick. So we got these versions over here. That is fine. Uh, let's add an auto levels on top. And then in here we want to add a blend. And I'm not sure. We might need to do this mostly in the norm map. But we can give it a go. So if we blend this as like a multiply probably. Let's see. Will that add some. Okay. So that does add some surface noise. If we just set this quite subtle like that. And let's give this a look. Oh, we did it not export? I do have the option, right? Yeah, I do have the option. Maybe it just did not export correctly. Or I was too fast. There we go. So if I now turn on and off my noise. Okay, so right now, there seems to be a problem over here with like the transition. And I want to have quite a few more of these transitions. I like my norm map details on here. Although I want to make them like a little bit stronger. But over here, it seems like that it does not give me the transition I want. So instead of just bothering with this, what I will do is let's add a frame here. Micro noise. And instead I'm just going to add this to my normal. So we have a normal. I'm going to add a normal combine. And then I'm going to duplicate my normal over here. Uh, at this point what we can do is we can just delete this version. We can grab this mask and plug in over here this normal. And then if we blend, uh, let's add a normal color at the top. We are just going to blend these two using my mask. And I want to actually invert my mask. So let's just invert. And let's do that over here one second. Or you can technically just do this. I guess that's, that is also technically another way that you can do it. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Let's in, increase the blur amount a little bit. And then I want to go to my mask. And I want to add a few more of these pieces in here. Because I quite like the look of them. So I'm just going to add like a few more and plug this into my normal combine. Make sure it's set to, to a high poly. And let's give that a go. Okay, so now we have this. So now our surface noise is too intense again. So we need to kind of like tone that one down. Over here. Uh, let's have a look. So yeah, we now got like some of these damages. That is looking pretty good. Having like these damages here and there. Mm, let's see. I'm not sure if my blur is actually causing problems because you can see that the blur adds those extra bits here and there. So if I maybe tone down my blur, that might actually be better. And let's see, we have this many. I actually want to have like a few more. I'm just going to play with my random seat to see if I can get like a better... Oh wait, uh, the random seat would need to happen here. Well, we can still change this random seat, that's no problem. There we go. See, that's like a better cover. Okay. You know what? I think that it looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we have now all of our damage and we have all of this stuff in place. That is good. This means that now what we can do, we can start focusing on our base color. And for our base color, it looks like we do want to create a mask so that we have various... Uh, different colors, although the colors are quite subtle. And yeah, for the rest, uh, so we have various colors. Then we are adding just like some general noise on top. Some white specks here and there. And maybe like some random damage. Yeah, that, sh that should not be too difficult. The only thing that will be difficult is to generate the correct mask. And I have a cool trick that I also want to show you for this. So let's first of all go ahead and add a normal. 
Now the trick is with the base color, not with the mass generation. The thing with the mass generation is that if we grab, let's see, so here we are creating the mask. This is still too thick of a line. So we would need to like push that in quite a bit more. However, that is easier said than done. So as we have seen, the edge detect is not able to get like these really thin edges. However, there is a note that I tend to use if I need to go for very thin edges. And it is called the fine edge detect note. It is made by Adobe. Uh, unfortunately, because they are revamping their website, it's currently, you cannot find it on the Substance Share website where it used to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is it will be simply be in your notes folder along with your cracks and your pebble generator. And if we plug this one in, what you can do is you can just plug in like normal a over here like a note like this. And then you can see that now this one is able to generate quite softer edges. So what I want to do is I want to try and get like uh, these base edges over here. And then I want to add like a histogram scan. We basically need to, for a flat fill, we are going to generate a flat fill. We need to get a continuous edge. So I'm just trying to play around with my contrast over here. And then, see, yeah, that's tricky. I think we need to still go quite a bit stronger. Let's see if we can then reduce this using blurs. So we have this one. Right now, what will most likely happen if I add a flat fill and then a, oh wait, I want to invert this. Make sure to invert before you add the flat fill. Flat fill, okay, so it is able to now generate different nodes and then flat fill to random grayscale. Now, my idea, and this was the trick that I wanted to show you, is that if you add a gradient map like normal, but you actually plug in a map like this, what will happen is, yeah, this is like, we need to make this a lot thinner. Um, we can add a, maybe try a distance node, but the distance node probably doesn't work because of the black areas. If we do maximum distance, yeah, see? That's a bummer. A distance node only works if it is white or black. So if I would add this to my histogram scan over here. Oh, sorry. After we have done this one. No, wait, that's still, that's still not correct. No, the distance node does need this. I just don't know. There we go. Okay, so that might have pushed it out. Uh, what I did is in my source input, I added my gradient, but then I added my mask in my mask input. And what that does is, as you can see, it kind of like just pushes out those colors a little bit. It's not perfect, but let's try that because else we have this really thick line in between, uh, which simply would not work. The only thing with distance node is, as you can see, it's a little bit buggy sometimes. Anyway, let's say that now we have generated a pretty decent mask over here. Now, what you can do is if you plug in a mask like this, because the gradient map reads gradients, you can actually go in here, simply, for example, click once like this. And then if we go ahead and then grab, for example, our texture, we can uh, click this one, pick gradient, click on one. Uh, hello? And then it crashes for some reason. Let's try that again, because uh, that's weird. So try again. Delete this, fresh start, click. You can do it. Let's get rid of this one. Black color, pick, click. There we go. Oh, I must have pressed the pick gradient. Uh, basically what we can do with this is now if we just simply click on a few of these nodes and over here also click on, for example, this one. And then what you can do is you can just click to add more points and keep adding more and more values, like some slightly darker, just press like a darker one, sometimes a lighter one. And what that will do is it will map these values accordingly to the gradient. So if I go in here and I add all of these small variations in gradients, it will just nicely map these gradients and everything in between that we did not click, it will still map it to just like a, a value between those two values over here. 
So I can go in here and now you can see that we have slightly different colors like that. So that's your general idea for like the basis. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and you can now start by adding like a bit of extra dirt. So I can add a frame and just call this one mask generator. And then we have this gradient and I'm going to uh, see, let's start by adding some, uh, let's start by just adding like some small things like uh, one blend for the black dirt, one blend for the white specs, one blend for the strong white dirt, uh, another blend for maybe like some position style leaking or something like that, uh, like the bottom over here, just like some darkening. Uh, yeah, let's, let's stick with this for now. So the first one is some white specks. We can go ahead and add a uniform color and simply make this color white like this. And then for our white specks, we can just use our noises and we can use our um, probably dirt too. Let's do dirt too, but I want to have a few more. So if you add a transform, over here, move it around and then blend these two transforms together using a max lighten. Now you can see that because we are moving it around, we can quickly just increase the amount of spots that we have like this and then tone down your opacity. Now the next one would be some darker dirt that you can just get like some overall dirt. And for that one, I'm going to go for uh, yeah, let's try for now just a uniform color that is black. And I'm tempted to use like a smart mask or something, like a mask generator. Maybe like just like a dirt mask. It could work. Uh, I know these ones, they are not the best, I will say. So, hmm, top to bottom. Sorry, I'm just distracted because I'm curious if we can use this one for what I want to use. Uh, yeah, we might be able to do that. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind for when we do our position. I know another way that we can create like leaks or something, but it's not the way that I want to create them. Uh, ambient occlusion. We can plug this in here. For curvature, we can simply add a curvature map. Plug in our curvature over here. And for the position, your flat fill is actually a position map. So you can use that one to add some position. And now you can see if that, oh, that will actually take care of the dirt right away. Nice, so it's like a two in one deal. So we get like this dirt around the bottom, but we also get some dirt around the edges. So that's quite nice. That's, uh, that will save me a little bit of time and a few extra notes. Now, what you can also do is you can always try to use a custom crunch. If you just type in cost or tick on use custom crunch. You can always go in here and for example, uh, let's say that there's like some new stuff here, some crunch leaks, for example. Let's type this into the crunch. And then what you can see is we get like more of like a leaky version. Now, I don't really like that one. So let's try uh, 0 0.13 maybe. And maybe tone down the contrast and play around a little bit more with our random seed. Yeah, but yeah, you can see that we get like some slight variation in the dirt. If I plug this into my opacity. Now I made this black dirt. I'm going to go for more of like a, like a brownish dirt like this. And would I want to maybe add some variation to this? I'm going to add some variation, but I'm going to do it in a very cheap way. And when I say that, it is basically by adding a gradient map, plugging it, plugging like a ma random mask, for example, this mask in here, and then just set the mode to like uh, subtract or something like that to get like some very slight variation like that. <laughs> it's really cheap, but it does work. And then in your opacity over here, just tone it down a little bit. Yeah, see, that's starting to look quite nice. I, I quite like the colors. They are working quite well. And uh, the dirt is also working quite nicely. So we got this one. Now let's go ahead and go for like some edge highlights over here. For which we can just steal 
uh, this mask over yeah this mask but I want to still capture a bit of it um, but I don't want to have like the exact same breakup so let's just go ahead and duplicate this and then in the top we are adding a mask so what we can do is we can add a transform to the top move it around a bit and see now it's like a slightly different positioning and if we go ahead and just plug this one uh, probably add like a histogram scan before we plug it in over here you can see that we can now play around with our scan and position and like this and then simply set this for example to overlay that often works and then tone it down quite a bit and it's just like to add some randomized edge highlights as you can see over here but uh, we want to make this quite quite subtle like this okay so we got those done and let's see um yeah we have like some extra strong white dirt also for which i'm going to add a gradient map along with a bmw spots too for your gradient map just pick like something uh, let's go like here yeah something like that just to uh, get something in there and then for my masking i'm going to basically add a histogram select and grab the mask that we used over here with our uh, distance contrast contrast up position range and just give it like a few of these we are going to have this extra strong dirt and then what you want to do is you then want to blend this using something to break up the dirt which is just going to be like a grunge map uh, BMW spots three. No, maybe like a crunch map zero zero one. Let's see if we do this, maybe at like a low level. That might work. Let's set this to subtract and just plug this in here. Okay, so maybe set the contrast a bit up. Play around with the balance a bit. Yeah, here, see, so that starts to add like a bit more of that extra dirt and we can play around with our range to get more or less of these broken pieces. And I'm just going to tone down the opacity a little bit over here, just to make it not as intense. And there we go, that's already looking like a pretty decent base color. So base underscore color. Let's move these out here. And you probably guessed it, at this point we are just going to also generate a roughness. Which should be just like a grayscale conversion and I'm just going to convert. Um, yeah, let's convert like this one over here. Add a histogram range to it. And we want these, I, I like to have them always like a little bit shiny. So I'm going to set my range a bit lower, so because else we have too much of a difference. And then set the position. Yeah, let's leave the position around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 to give it a little bit more shine. Then if we blend this a couple times. So blend, blend, blend. The first blend will be our mask over here. And set that one to art. So that one will add a big bulk of those highlights. The second one will be these edge highlights, which I'm going to set to subtract. To give them a little bit of like a glistering punch then uh, we have over here our extra dirt i'm going to also set that one to art make those extra dull and then i feel like what would be cool is to actually add another blend and those specs that we added over here the dirt specs if we set those to subtract they might give us like again like a bit of like that glistering effect that you sometimes see they might be too big if they are too big we just flip around the colors but they might also look quite interesting and that's pretty much it we now have our maps so what we can do 
is we can go into Marmoset, and I'm quite excited to see how this looks. Because I feel like the base color went really well. Oops, I accidentally opened up. One second, let me just quickly save my scene. I accidentally misclicked, you guys didn't see, because it's on the other side, but there we go. Okay, so we have our base color, for which we do need to set our color back to white. And then we have our roughness over here. Honestly, that looks pretty good. See, we got some nice highlights here. Um, let's play out a bit more with like my shine. Yeah, you know what? I quite like this. I think it looks really cool. Maybe we can gather some darkening from... Somehow, maybe from like... Uh, I don't think we can, but... Well, we can with a lot of effort, but I don't think if it is worth it. Mm. So let's see. Uh, do we have like a fine edge detect? I don't. I doubt that it will work. But like, yeah, I guess it sort of works. So if we do something like this, and then if we add a blend on top with a uniform black color, and for the mask we are going to basically grab an edge detect from this mask. And it's basically just to map or to remove those outlines. Um, can we invert it? Yes, okay. Okay, so that might actually work. So if we have these pieces over here. I don't know, I don't. we don't even need to blend, do we? Oh yeah, yeah, we do need to blend. So we have these pieces over here. And now if we add like a histogram scan, for example. Then we can... Oh, we need to be quite careful. So we cannot push those... A lot, but let's say that we have this and I just plug this behind here and use my dark noise. Yeah, that might actually work and we can always like do a little bit of blurring and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just call this one damage mask in our frame and let's have a look. Okay, it's a bit difficult to see. That might also be because of the highlights. So let's see if we can maybe do something like this. So we have this one. What if we now just add like a tiny blur high quality grayscale? Also, one thing that you can do is you can try to add a shadows. I doubt or I don't think it will actually be able to register but what you can do with the shadows if you push it down and then invert grayscale you can often get like a slightly strong map but as you can see here if we now maybe do like an outer levels it's really difficult to get the right effect but yeah, this might be, we might be able to do this. I don't need that many samples. I think I only need like eight samples. Uh, let's not do auto levels. Let's do like a histogram scan so that we can push it even more. And try to get something like this. Let's see. Okay. Uh, if I, instead of using the brown color, if I make an even darker black color over here, would that show up? Okay, that shows up a little bit better. And then maybe if we also add this one into our roughness, it can actually bring out the color a bit more. So if we add this blend, one second, blend over here, and then plug this into the top and set this to be an art. Yeah, see here, you can start to see it a little bit. It's quite tricky to get, because it's such a fine detail, it's just difficult to get uh, 
a strong effector here. Let me just add my shadows a bit more. Maybe at this point I do need more samples. And see after this we can also like blur it a little bit and do that. But over here I'm starting to see it. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Let's say that at this point, this material is once again also like pretty good. So we are done with this. I'm going to save my scene. I'm going to render out a nice image just so that we can have a close-up look. And then um, if needed, I don't think this one actually needs to have a lot of polish. Like uh, this was quite a spot on material, if I say so myself. Probably because it's like quite simple shapes compared to, for example, bricks and everything. But uh, yeah, I like it. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to, while it's rendering out the image, call this roughness. I will later on do also an optimization pass, but right now I'm just focused on getting all of our materials, or at least the, the basis of it. So the next one would be the last one, which is our plaster. Once the plaster is done, I might do a little polishing around, just like a little one, um, just to prepare it for Unreal. And after that, what we are going to do is finally go back to modeling. And then we will go ahead and start by modeling our final wood pieces, which are going to be uh, very important. And then we will go ahead and work on the ground and everything like that. So, are you done rendering? You are done rendering. Let's have one extra look at our image. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That looks cool. Okay. Nice. Yeah, solid material. Uh, awesome. So that is now done. You can save your scene. And let's go ahead and continue on to the next chapter where we will work on creating our plaster material.